So good morning everyone. Uh, hope you are uh, having good time at this uh, great session organized by Apollo. We want to thank uh, Apollo for giving us this opportunity. This is our first time at this conference. Uh, so I am representing here uh, GGK Technologies. Uh, we have been in, uh, in business for about 12 years, working primarily in US with healthcare providers, payers, healthcare technology companies. Uh, you know, uh, developing solutions for payers and uh, uh, for some of the providers like uh, some advanced analytics, predictive analytics types of solutions uh, on, on the e-prescription side, uh, medication management. So we have done a lot of work there. Uh, we are relatively new to India market. Uh, we, have, we have decided to develop a solution uh, based on our experience in working uh, uh, in, Indian, uh, in, in other countries. So when we started this, uh, you know, uh, we felt that, uh, I mean, like, we all know that uh, healthcare industry produces more data than any other industries. We all agree to that. But the key thing is, you know, uh, we are getting into this data explosion mode. So the key thing that we noticed, especially in, in India, and some of this was discussed, I'm glad it was discussed in earlier uh, uh, session today. Uh, the key thing is there are no interoperable standards. You know, whether you take HL7 or whatever type of standards, there are not many vendors uh, following those standards. That was one of the key things that we, you know, including uh, precise data definitions, there are, there's lack of HIT standards, and uh, uh, there's lack of, uh, I would say, more like a unified architecture kind of thing was missing uh, for, for uh, exchanging, uh, for communicating more seamlessly. Um, for us, one of the things that we, when we work with any, any clients, uh, we don't want to lock any clients to our software. We want it to be very open. We want to follow the standards so that clients can take and do whatever they want. You know, when in any, any application that we develop, we have to consume the data, we have to produce the data. We have to work with upstream applications and downstream applications. That's the key thing for us. And we have noticed, you know, there were a lot of EMR, EHR uh, softwares that are available in India. They're not, uh, they're not following all the standards. And uh, uh, I'm, I'm glad to hear that the Neha and other government authorities are making a lot of progress on that. Arvind talked about this earlier today. So hopefully we'll have uh, standards very soon and everyone will follow those interoperable standards. Um, of course, uh, some of the challenges in India is in, 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 in smaller healthcare facilities or in, in rural healthcare facilities, we still do not have uh, uh, the, the required IT structure, IT infrastructure. So we still have to uh, work on that. Uh, and uh, also, the, the last point here is very important is that cooperation uh, among different providers, uh, you know, uh, that freeness to share the information, to exchange the data, that's also we felt was missing based on our experience. Um, assuming uh, we have data, uh, assuming we have interoperable uh, standards, um, what are some of the possibilities? Again, this is based on our experience. It's not all possibilities that we are talking about. <laughs> So one of the things that you know we were talking about is um, uh, earlier we talked about is sentiment analysis. Even we have even if we have scanned documents from the scanned documents, what we can do is we can have an OCR optical character recognition kind of a software which can scan the documents for certain keywords. Based on that, it can pull up some records and then we apply some NLP kind of uh, techniques on that to do sentiment analysis. So we can pick up the, the medical records very quickly with negative sentiments. So this, this, this is one possible uh, thing that we can do even with the scanned documents. Um, the second point uh, here uh, uh, that I want to mention, this is more on uh, intervention side. And this is happening in, in US, uh, uh, I'm sure, uh, and this is all based uh, on, you know, see one thing is we look at the, the patient's uh, medical uh, history uh, based on the historical data, uh, we are looking at the, uh, the, the current conditions. But how do we look at uh, the possible uh, future conditions? Um, you know, that's what we are getting into the, the, the predictive analytics side of it, right? We know what the patient has, but can we make a best assessment of what patient will have in future? Um, and I'm not going to go into the deep of how this is done in predictive analytics in, 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 in a limited time here. Uh, there are, you know, the data is the most important thing for it, but of course there are a lot of statistical models that we have to develop and then uh, using some of the uh, machine uh, learning techniques, uh, that's the key thing for, for any predictive analytics. 
So one, one uh, 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 possible solution that, again, this is the solution that we developed in US is, in US we have ICD codes. Uh, based on ICD codes, you know, there are some, uh, you know, if you have like 35, 40,000 ICD codes, you know, they have classified that into few diagnoses, and then they have further classified it into what we call as HCCs, hierarchical condition categories. There are about 70 HCCs. So what they are doing is, HCC is nothing but just to simplify for your understanding, um, you can see it's, it's basically, uh, it's, it's, a, it's prioritizing the relative risks of all diseases. So that's, that's what HCC does. And this is, a lot of this is driven by payers in US because instead of treating when the patient is sick, they want to treat now. By treating now, the cost is less. So they, are, they would like to incentivize the patients to visit doctors at a regular intervals, maybe every month. In fact, they give some coupons and things like that. So this is what we meant here by proactive interventions and early diagnosis. So based on this HCC uh, risk adjustment model, uh, what they do is we, we schedule an, an encounter. Uh, you know, we schedule an appointment with the doctor. Uh, so that's the second thing. The third here application that we talked about, patient assessment. This is more at point of care. This happens in real time, so based on existing conditions and the predictive uh, conditions for the future. Um, of course, we do a, a questionnaire kind of a thing uh, with the patient to make sure that we are confirming some of those conditions. And then based on that, doctor can recommend some procedures. The whole idea at this system is to decide, you know, whether the, uh, whether the uh, encounter, you know, at this encounter, whether whatever the prediction that we made, is that true or not. That, that's what we are trying to do at this uh, third level. The fourth is more like this is uh, prescriptive uh, uh, analytics. This again, you know, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with IBM's Watson kind of a software where uh, it's recommending uh, to add some, uh, some things to the prescription or remove some things from the prescription. Uh, so that's another type of uh, application that we can think of. E-prescription again uh, is basically connecting the providers directly to the, to the pharmacies and the labs to avoid any, any manual uh, errors and things like that. The last year is, is a more of a business intelligence. Uh, assuming we have all the data, uh, we can analyze the, the, the patient uh, healthcare based on a region for a particular population in a, in a given region or a given state for a particular age category. Uh, you know, what is the risk that someone at my age uh, uh, having uh, diabetes coming from you know, certain region, gender, there are a lot of uh, business intelligence. Uh, type of reports that we can uh, develop uh, based on uh, the, the data. So these are some of the uh, possibilities. Earlier we had a discussion uh, today, uh, ICD versus the other standards that are being uh, adopted. So I'm sure we can develop you know, models using those codes. Uh, so this is put into a diagrammatic uh, representation here, what I just talked about. We have hospitals, clinics, labs, insurance uh, companies. If we have uh, standardized EMR, EHR systems and they're all getting into this common data exchange here. And you know, uh, if we're taking the scanned documents, we can do OCR type of things uh, on the scanned documents and then again use NLP for doing sentiment analysis. That's uh, the one possibility. Uh, what I talked about, the HCC, uh, you know, more of prescriptive analytics there. And of course, all of this data can be given to the government for population health management, uh, for uh, research agencies. So you know, this is just a diagrammatic representation. So uh, the whole idea is, you know, these are some of the outcomes. Why are we doing, uh, you know, if you have the healthcare data exchange, combining that with power of predictive analytics, the whole idea is to lower the cost and, uh, you know, provide better uh, uh, quality of healthcare. Um, that's the whole idea. Uh, again, uh, uh, we, have, uh, we are developing all of this uh, for Indian market. We have launched our product yesterday. Sangeeta Reddy, madam, uh, launched the product. Uh, uh, I would like to hear more from you, uh, you know, the opportunities for collaboration. Uh, our booth is in the lunch area, so please uh, stop by, and we would like to talk uh, more from, uh, you know, uh, ideas that you have, how we can work together. Thank you very much.